How's it going? We are going to do another quick video. We're going to talk about specifically Ironman Chattanooga swim course. So we'll dive in a little bit of history. The race has been around since 2014. There has been one year in 2015. They did not have a swim because it was raining and flooded. So basically, you can kind of, if you can make it out here, the swim exit area in Ross's Landing is completely underwater. There have been no way. The current was too strong. There's too much debris in the river. It just couldn't happen. But every other year, they've had a swim. Uh, I did the race in 2014 when I was the inaugural event. I did it in 2018 when there was no swim, and I did it in 2019 when there was a swim. So I've got a little bit of history with the race to draw upon to help get you prepared for the swim at Ironman Chattanooga. Um, so we're going to dive right into it. And my name is Ryan, Seth Pace Triathlon. If you're watching this, you should know that by now, but if not, welcome. So traditionally, the race has been wetsuit optional. So there's the window that uh, wetsuits are allowed um, certain, above a certain temperature and notice for the wetsuit cutoff temperature is at 76.1 degrees and below. Wetsuit legal, anybody can wear it, 76.1 and above. And I believe the cutoff is 83.8 degrees. At that point, if the water is that warm, they will not allow anybody to wear a wetsuit, but Ironman Chattanooga has always been optional. I don't think the water has ever been that warm. so. Don't, there are very few opportunities you're going to run into a race where the water is that warm. You just can't wear a wetsuit whatsoever. But 76.1 is kind of what you're looking for. Below that is wetsuit legal. Above that is wetsuit optional. And I believe every year, aside from 2018 when they haven't swim, that it's been wetsuit optional. So if you wanted to wear a wetsuit, you could put one on, but you had to start at the end of the line uh, with the wetsuit kind of wave, the rolling swim start, and jump in the water and use it. So. If you need that wetsuit uh, for buoyancy or just to get through the swim, then you know, bring it, have it. Um, it's been close some years. I think 2014, it was close to 76.1, but morning up, we couldn't get it down to below 76.1. So then they went ahead and had wetsuit optional. I chose to wear a speed suit, it did just fine. So we'll get into that a little bit later. But so for Ironman Chattanooga, it's a rolling swim start from the dock. So if you see this picture here, they kind of build a little dock. Uh, there's a little park up here, and you walk a little trail. I think it's about a mile and a half, three quarters of a mile total distance. And if you get there early, it's not a problem. You get up pretty close to the front. Um, you have to get a ride from the transition area to there. So you need to be there a little bit early so you can get all your stuff situated as far as your transition bags, uh, your cuffs and knees bags, make sure your bike's all good, air your tires, set up your bike, whatever you do. Then you drop everything and you have a morning clothes bag. Don't think you can take anything of value to put in there. Uh, I've always gotten mine back, but you never know. Uh, so when you get to the swim start, uh, they'll drop you off on a the bus. They'll have big, huge bins where you can put your swim gear or your morning uh, gear bag. Um, but basically, you're just kind of chilling out. Uh, they have porta potties at the uh, bus drop off area. So if you need to go to the restroom, try to go as close to that as possible. Because if you're close to the swim start, there's no accessible restrooms. So you just got to time that pretty well. But basically when they start you, you're all in a huge line. You go underneath a big, huge banner. And then you walk down the dock. And as soon as you get to the dock, you need to be goggles on, earplugs. I use earplugs, whatever. Ready to go, ready to jump in. Because they want you off that dock and out of the way. So they're pretty efficient at getting everybody in there. I think it's maybe 20, 25 minutes total. Uh, they get everybody out of there and then their mission is to close that area up because you actually run by there during the race or used to anyway i think you still do um i did in 2019 and uh, couldn't remember off the top of my head it was kind of water but i think you run by this area uh during the race so they want to get that all all squared away all the little gates and everything the barriers and everything out of the way so basically that's the swim start area so you come off the dock there's really, I mean, you jump in the water, there it's deep, you're never gonna touch bottom or anything, so just be ready. Um, and like I said, you need to be ready. Wetsuit optional, you're gonna start towards back, which might be kind of good if you need the port bodies over there, uh, it's a good spot to be in. Um, but also, uh, wet uh, speed suit or swim skin uh, is a good option as well. I use those, like I said, uh, for 14 and 2019 when I did the race, and I think it works out well. Give you a little bit more buoyancy, uh, sucks up the circumference of the body and a little less drag. So you got a rolling swim start. Uh, you'll exit water of Ross's Landing. So when you swim up here, you 
you're swimming in and then you want to take a sharp right in there. So far, the years I've done it, the two years I did the swim, the current has not been strong enough that you need to worry about it. If you're out too far, you can't swim. You don't, it's not really fighting too much of a current. I say that now, you don't want to be in a race where you're out here too wide and then you're having to fight the current to get back in and waste a lot of energy and time getting in. So when you're swimming in and you see that Ross's landing area, you need to start coming in close, but watch out. They do have boats in the, and stuff sitting in there. So you want to be as close to that corner as possible. Make sure you're sighting, sighting well to get there and not missing the turn. So you exit the water at Ross's landing. Stay on the left side of the river, follow the buoys. So when you start here, the river is pretty wide. And when they show you the diagram of the swim course, they've got buoys on the, if, you know, you're swimming down the river on your left side. Um, you can swim either side of the buoys if you want to swim closer to shore or closer to the middle of the river. Um, but you want to stay on the left side of the river. So stay close to the buoys. You're not going to gain any time by trying to swim out a little bit further and catching a stronger current or anything like that. Uh, I've seen athletes do that and just kind of waste the time. Uh, but do be careful. There is there is like a minor current that keeps wanting to suck you into shore. So if you get in between the buoys and shore, it's it's going to kind of push you to shore. So it's a it's constant fight to make sure that you're not swimming right into shore. Um, because like I said, they put the buoys in there and try to be the straightest line between the start and finish. So you want to stay as close to those as possible. Um, really veering off whenever you're wasting time, wasting energy, and you're adding more distance to swim than you really need. So stay on the left side of the river. But watch for that current. That's where you want to do sighting often. You want to sight often to keep those buoys on track. Uh, 2019, I find myself, you know, trying to get as many strokes as possible. Think I'm going straight. I look up and there's the buoy off to the right. And I correct. I'm swimming for a little bit. I look up and the buoy is still off to the right. So I had to change my strategy halfway through the swim in order to keep myself on course that I was basically sighting every other stroke. Um, it, it was probably not the most efficient swim, but it saved me the most of time because the, the water current we kept trying to, like I said, pull me into the shore and pull me away from the buoys. So you don't want to end up in Ross's Landing because there's a little section here. If you swim into this concrete side of it, you're going to have to swim around it. So you definitely don't want to get sucked in too close to the um, to the abutments for the bridges, uh, to shore in general. Uh, so just make sure you're, you're paying attention when you're swimming in um, that you're not letting that current kind of pull you off the shore. So sight often, sight the buoys, run off of them. Um, Really, you're going to be spread out with other people, so there's going to be people all over the place. So if you pick somebody and try to follow them, there's no guarantee that they're going to swim in the right direction. Plus, if you do follow them, um, you know, they could end up with current and be out of sight. You know, there's plenty of times I've looked up and thought I was swimming with somebody, and I looked up and they're gone. Um, they either ended up on the right side or left side or past them or who knows where. So it's kind of hard, uh, especially, I mean, the, the rolling start, you're supposed to kind of pick seed yourself accordingly to time but really it doesn't really happen all that well so i mean you're swimming with people above and below your ability so the nice thing is that usually you're not swimming you're not getting swam over you're not getting to swim under you're not to swim over people um it's really less congested so that's kind of a nice part about this race too for when swim start and going down river uh consider swim skin like i said swim skin or speed suit is going on wet suit so if you're gonna go to the race and it's 76.2 degrees and it's wetsuit optional. Um, if you're not gonna go wetsuit, get a speed suit. I've gotten mine off all at eBay. Uh, they're great used, cheap. Um, you know, you can go get a new one for $150 or something like that. But like I said, eBay is a great secondary market for them. Uh, you do just fine in them. Um, Penny current could be 20 to 10 minutes faster than standard IM swim time. So this is a big, I think, attraction for Ironman Chattanooga is a downriver swim. But you got to take it with a grain of salt. 2014, it was a pretty strong current. So I actually bettered my IM standalone swim time by about 20 minutes. I did it in 56 minutes. Um, so typically I'm a 115 kind of Ironman distance uh, uh, swimmer for 2.4 miles. So pending that current, you can zip down there pretty quick. Uh, 2019, it was a decent current. So I did it a little bit over an hour. Uh, it still bettered my usual swim times. So you're going to get a current. You're going to get a little bit of help. Um, it just depends on the rain and the conditions and whatever has happened in the area lately. Uh, like I said, 2018, it rained so much. I mean, it was strong current, but you're going to get taken out by a big log or, you know, there was really no place to exit in Ross's Landing. I mean, because the water was basically up to the grass area, so it just wasn't safe, so you couldn't have the swim. But just be prepared. 
don't get bent out of shape um, because when I got out in 2019, I was kind of disappointed in my swim time. wasn't as fast as I was hoping for. But talking with friends that did the race too, and other people, you know, the, all the swim times are kind of on par with how much or how fast or how slow that they were compared to what they thought they would be. So really, I mean, there's just no way to know what that current is going to be on race day. You can kind of, I think you can find on the internet, find the, the flow rate. Um, but I think they do try to get it ratcheted down just a little bit to make it safe uh, for the Ironman race. So it could be a lot lower than what that actually is like the day before. Um, so so everybody's just not swept away downstream or something crazy like that. Because you do have kayakers and you don't want them having to like struggle to stay in place and, and, and watch you guys be safe out there. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. It is a down reverse swim. You will get some help. Um, but it could be 20 minutes faster or it could be 10 minutes faster. It just depends on what's going on with the weather uh, at that time of year and kind of what the people that run the river decide to do. So this is my quick hit list for Ironman Chattanooga Swim Course. Um, have kind of your, your swim plan, you know, wetsuit plan. Bring a wetsuit, whichever one you've been training with traditionally. If you don't have one, I suggest go getting one. Um, it is typically wetsuit optional. So if you bring it, you can use it, start the end of the group. If you don't want to use it, if you want to stay competitive for age group awards, bring a speed suit, jump right in for a rolling start with everybody else. Rolling start, less contact, it's really nice. Um, stay with the buoy line, a little bit right, a little bit left, and kind of go wherever you want. But don't, there's a little island down river, don't swim over wide of the island and try to get to the middle of the river. You're really not going to gain anything out of it. Um, because that current, just be paying attention to that current will kind of pull you to shore a little bit as you're swimming along. So you almost have to have a diagonal. So I suggest sighting often. Um, so be working at your training. You know, if you're just doing a pool or open water, or whatever, um, hopefully open water, you're doing sighting. But if you're just in a pool and you're just cranking yards, make sure you're doing a lot of kind of Tarzan drills where you're swimming with your head above water. Uh, Cause if you're not used to that, you're going to get out of the water after four, four miles. Your neck's going to be sore. Your legs going to be a little stiff. And it's going to be really awkward getting out of that water, uh, getting over to T2. Um, so swim tent and speed suit, and then just manage your expectations of what your time is going to be on that swim because it can be fast, it can be slow. It should be better than your standalone Ironman time if you did it in a still body of water like a lake or something like that. Um, you should have a faster swim time, but don't get bad in shape if, if you're thinking, oh, that's going to be 30 minutes faster, 20 minutes faster, and it comes out 10, 5 minutes faster. Going to be faster and overall you're going to save some efficiency because the current's going to carry you along but 2014 um, they joked that you could have gone in an inner tube from start to finish and made it the time cut off without swimming at all um, without swimming on stroke you could have just floated the river so you know keep that in mind like i said i think it's a, it's a big attractive race for the first time ironman athlete because of that swim there's a lot less stress uh, most of them are rolling swim starts anyway, but this one's nice. They put you on a dock, and it's just naturally kind of filtered out to a smaller start. Once you hit that dock, you got to be ready. You can't just stand around, keep your goggles on, and get everything situated. You need to be up here as soon as you kind of start coming out of the trees, goggles on, earplugs on, uh, nose plugs, whatever you got, whatever you're doing, uh, last drink of water or whatever before you throw the container or trash can. That's the time to do it because once you go, once you get on that dock, they expect you to go. They don't want you sitting around and waiting because you're also going to pass the timing mat. Um, as you walk down. So as soon as you pass that mat, time starts. So if you're jacking around for 10 minutes, that's 10 minutes more in your race time. Um, and those, you know, Ironman Giant Movie, you only got 16 hours and 30 minutes because of, of time differentials and sunset, all that kind of stuff, sunrise. So you've got a little bit of a time disadvantage to begin with, but you should be able to overcome that on the swim for sure. So this is my kind of take on kind of what to expect for the swim. Bring your wetsuit, bring your speed suit. Uh, be ready if it's wetsuit optional, which traditionally has been. You need to depend on that wetsuit uh, just for mental or physical, whatever. You should be able to use it. Um, there's, I doubt that this river will be so warm that wetsuits will just not be legal at all. So this is the rest. Pause the video. Look at my, my suggestions, my bullet points. Like I said, I've done the race three times. If you got any questions, email me back. If you get this an email, put a comment on the Facebook uh, video or YouTube video, wherever you find this, put a comment on there, tag me, whatever, and I'll get back to you and answer any questions you might have. So with that, happy training out there, and we'll see you on race day. Talk to you later.